Hello Spartans, my name is Dave Isbell and I am the Assistant Director of Alumni Professional Enrichment in the MSU Alumni Association. I'm happy to welcome you to today's presentation, How Career Truth Leads to Organizational Success. Before I introduce you to our presenters, I want to point out to you the chat window on the left side of your screen. This is where you can type your questions, which we'll be sure to answer by the end of the presentation. My assistant Kara is logged in as helping Spartans. Go ahead and say hello, Kara. If you're having technical difficulties, please see the pod options at the top right corner of the chat box. From there, you can click on Start Chat with Hosts, and Kara will help you. For questions to the presenter, please be sure to use the Everyone tab at the bottom left of your screen. Also, all of our webinars are recorded. We found at www.spartanshelpingspartans.com. The chat conversation will be saved to the recording, and all of the live hyperlinks throughout the chat and presentation will remain live. At the end of the webinar, we invite you to continue the conversation on Twitter. You can find us at Helping Spartans, and the hashtag for this discussion will be Career Truth. For information about upcoming webinars, live streams, and other events, please visit us at alumni.msu.edu slash lens. With that, it's my honor to introduce you to our presenters today. Robin Kegerace is a senior consultant with Sibson Consulting, a member of the Siegel Group. Robin works primarily in Sibson's performance and rewards in organization and talent practices. She's consulted with many organizations, including Allscripts, Caterpillar, GlaxoKline, SmithKline, Georgetown University, Microsoft, Rex Hospital, and Wake Forest University. Consulting areas of expertise include career frameworks, performance management, and compensation. Prior to consulting, Robin held human resource positions at Merck and two outsourced HR companies. She has a bachelor's degree from that other school in Michigan and a master's degree from MSU. Uh, Robin's located at, in Sibson's Raleigh, North Carolina office, and her contact information will be at the end of the presentation. Uh, with her is Angelita Beckham, who is the vice president at Sibson Consulting, a division of the Siegel Company. She's a member of Sibson's performance and rewards in organizational effectiveness and talent management practice. She has over 14 years of experience and has consulted with many clients in industries from pharmaceuticals to technology and higher education. She works to help clients develop and implement more effective performance and rewards programs. Past clients include Pfizer, Merck, Johnson & Johnson, Allscripts, Georgia Institute of Technology, and Rex Hospital. Her past experience includes positions with Bank of America and Eli Lilly. She has a bachelor's degree from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill and a master's in business administration from the Ross School of Business at the University of Michigan. Angelita is located in Sibson's Raleigh, North Carolina office with Robin. Thank you both for being here today, and we look forward to hearing what you have to teach us. Great. Um, thank you, Dave. Um, this is Robin, and I will get us started um, today and then uh, turn it over to Angelita um, once we get going a little bit. Um, we're really excited to be here um, with you to share this webcast. And um, as Dave mentioned, I, I was over on the dark side um, before when I was in college at the other school um, in Michigan, and then uh, fortunately, I saw the light um, and then came uh, to the, the, the good side um, for graduate school. Um, and I still have family um, in East Lansing, and I heard that it is cold um, right now and potentially that there were some snow. So um, hopefully for, for everyone in Michigan, um, spring will, will come soon. Um, so what we want to talk about today um, is career truth and, and really what does that have to do with, with organizational success? Um, so in getting us started, I have a question for you all um, to think about. Um, you're welcome to write comments, um, but I have a couple questions to get this topic started. So how many of you would say that your organization is good at identifying and communicating uh, career opportunities for employees? And then the second question is, how many of you would say your organization is good at identifying the type of talent needed to meet future business needs? And so as you reflect on that, um, consider 
what it would be like if you could do both of those well. So we're going to been, spend time talking about career frameworks, um, which are really tools to help you do both identifying and communicating career opportunities with your employees and identifying any skill gaps um, that there might be within your organization. Um, so we're going to start talking about what do we mean by a career framework? Um, so essentially, we wanted to outline what it is and what it is not. Um, but career frameworks on the left-hand side really focus on providing clarity and consistency um, in terms of what opportunities exist for career movement, how do you define career development. It also sets the foundations for what's expected for performance. Um, what are the capabilities required um, for the organization? And really striking that balance between the business need and employee readiness and promoting shared ownership of career development. Um, what it's not intended to be is a guarantee or a replacement. So it's not intended to guarantee progression um, or replace the relationship between the manager and the employee. It's a, it's a way to provide a tool for those conversations between managers and employees. It's also not a guarantee of a pay increase or intended to be a check the box activity. So it's not intended to be a prescribed list of activities for an individual to do. Um, and once those have been checked off, then to be promoted. So when, we, when you think about career framework and when we're talking about career frameworks, we wanted to set the stage and, um, as far as what it is and what it is not. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk a little bit about components within a, within a career framework. Um, you'll see these outlined on this slide. Uh, on the left-hand side, really focusing on the broader organizational side, and then as we move along the continuum, moving into more at the individual level. So I'll kind of go through each of these. Um, so the behavioral standards, what that means, um, those are the overarching values or expectations for a, for a company or an organization something that is expected to apply to everyone. Um, often we see things like integrity um, or communication. So these are what are the under what are the core values and expectations for being working at that organization. The next component, um, these would be job competencies, getting more specific within a department or a job, um, somewhat behavioral based. So it could be if you take um, a customer service organization, um, problem solving, expediency. Uh, and we typically think about these things in terms of what is expected for high performance. And then we move into the middle. Uh, these are the job duties. What are the responsibilities, tasks, and activities of the job? Uh, along with the qualifications in terms of the education and experience. So these are what are the overall expectations of specific jobs. And then we get into the individual goals. Uh, so then based on the requirements and standards, what should this individual be focused on? And how is that in reinforced by the manager and then the, the messages that the manager is getting? And then lastly, uh, a component of a career framework are development plans. And this is looking at both current and then desired or future positions and opportunities, um, highlighting both the strengths and areas for development uh, for an individual. So what we've found is oftentimes um, people know what, what kind of rewards are available to them, but it's, the expectations are unclear. Um, it's not clear and consistent in terms of what's what's expected in your current position or as you would move into a future opportunities within an organization. So what we're going to talk through um, are basically what are some of the critical success factors or what are some of the benefits that you can obtain with a career framework. Um, I'll highlight each of these briefly now um, just to set the stage but then we will spend time walking through each of these in detail. So the first piece is really about 
getting on the same page. What what does it mean to have a career within your organization? Um, setting a common philosophy. And then the second piece would be being real um, about expectations. Back to making the opportunities clear uh, and then increasing fairness and consistency. Um, and then shifting to the, to the mindset of paying for growth. Uh, we'll talk about this in more detail, but oftentimes organizations are um, in a situation where the focus is put on changing, reevaluating jobs, um, individuals gaming, you know, gaming the system to get more money for employees. Um, but here we're, we're challenging to shift that focus using career frameworks to pay for growth. We'll, we'll get into that a little bit more in detail in a moment. Um, and then focus on, again, on growth and what does that really look like at an individual level? How do you balance the strengths with opportunities and messaging that? Um, and then the, the important role of managers. Um, they play a really critical role in talking about careers with employees. And then what is the employee's role um, and how they can own their career development? Uh, and then we have one more uh, surprise element just to keep you all in suspense. Um, so we will we'll talk through each of these. And I'm going to go ahead and get into the first one. Um, so we like to have a little fun with this. Um, so we framed this, the philosophy, as what song are you playing? So if you think about asking your leaders, if you ask each of them individually, what is your career philosophy? What do you think they would say? Do you think they would say the same thing? Don't, do you think they should um, say the same thing? So what we're going to do is, is talk about some examples, just some example philosophies and songs that organizations um, might be playing. And as I said, we like to have a little bit of fun. So as we, as we go through these, um, you might have a little tune um, in your head that corresponds to the song. Um, but the first one we have is Stay, just a little bit longer. Um, and that one is really focused on keeping people in their jobs and gradually expanding um, within the current jobs. An example of this um, might be in a call center setting um, where it's really helpful and more useful for people to stay in their positions because of the reinvestment uh, investment in retraining. Um, and it helps them expand, you expand the job to focus on delivering high quality to customers um, rather than people moving across multiple jobs. So that would be one example of a song that, that you could be playing. And then we have a different one, uh, Moving On Up. And we often see this um, in a scientific or technical um, type of an area. So if you think about maybe engineering as an example, and this would be um, developing people in their jobs um, within the same job family or area. There's really more of a vertical focus. And then uh, a little bit contrary to that would be the cha-cha changes. Um, and that one is you're developing people to move more laterally or cross-functionally. Um, an example might be um, a large-scale manufacturing or a pharmaceutical organization that in order to um, reach a leadership level, really need to understand all the parts of the business, have some exposure to operations, quality, um, engineering. So this would be an example of what that song or that philosophy might be. And then the last one, uh, it's a little trying to be a little bit humorous here, but uh, hit the road, Jack. And, and what that one means is essentially uh, sometimes it's understood that having people, you know, develop in their jobs, but there may only be an opportunity to a certain point. And it really that's preparing them for an opportunity outside of the organization. Um, we've seen this with if you think about professional associations, maybe um, maybe an employer will go work with a member organization after working within an association. 
So these are just some examples um, and to give you something to think about um, within your organization. Um, what song are you playing? Do you think people are aligned with what that philosophy is? Um, and one other point I'll add here is you might have a mix of philosophies within your organization. You might have within certain areas, it's more about the vertical focus. Um, in others, it might be more about getting the breadth of exposure and experience. Um, and that's, that's good. The, the real focus is being clear and being aligned in what that philosophy is. And then we're going to walk through just a couple of these um, in a little bit closer detail. Um, so this would be the moving on up, more of the vertical focus. So we have a, a quick snapshot here of two sub-functions within IT. So you're taking systems engineering and database administration. So you can see here the focus is really about progression within a certain area of expertise. Um, so the requirements would focus on moving from level one to level two to level three um, within systems engineering or within two, three, and four within database administration. The, the focus is not about moving across um, these sub-functions. Okay, and then conversely, this would just be an example if we're having three functions and the career path here would be a mix. It would be a mix of um, maybe having um, a position and an experience within a sub-function, staying within that sub-function to another level, then moving, moving to a different um, function, gaining exp expertise and experience there, and then moving and building further breadth um, of knowledge and expertise. Okay, um, so now I'm actually going to turn it over to Angelita. Hello, thanks Robin. Um, so I am going to continue to walk us through um, the benefits of having a career framework within your organization. Um, one of the second benefits that we wanted to talk about was um, really helping to set uh, real ec realistic expectations about career progression, what opportunities are in terms of career paths within an organization or within a function. So if you take a look at um, this career path example, so this is a example career path for a finance function, for example. Um, you have the CFO who is over the organ over the function, and then you have different sub-functions um, such as tax and accounting operations. So um, if you were to look at this, uh, what are some things, just think about, you know, as you're listening to us, think about what are some things that this career framework might tell you? Um, some of the things, you know, as, as you take a look at it, one of the things might be that, for example, in the operations group, um, if you would like to progress, um, there's really, you know, going from a specialist, um, you might have to go over to accounting to get some additional experience to then be able to progress up to a manager level, for example. Um, also within operations, um, just because of the needs of this function, the needs of the organization, the highest level is a director. So if you ever want to progress, for example, to a senior director, then you'd probably, then you would need to move out of operations into accounting or tax um, to get to that senior director level. So one of the things that we found as we work with our, with our clients on this is that it really helps make realistic what the career opportunities are and what the career paths might be. So that's one example of how this can help set uh, realistic expectations. Um, another way that it helps set expectations is that, um, you know, every organization is, within every organization, you may not always have um, unlimited opportunities in order to progress. So you may th think of an organization as organized as in a pyramid. So you have the professional staff, um, you then have management, and then leadership. So a career framework helps to identify what the opportunities are,
but also setting the right expectations that as you move up, then those opportunities start to get fewer and fewer. However, a career framework, I'm going to show you in a little bit uh, later on in a few slides, the career framework also sets expectations or sets an understanding of what's required to move from one level to the next. So how do you progress from a professional level up to a management level and up to a leadership level? Um, those are also the, one of the benefits that you get from a career framework, and I'll be able to show you an example of that um, as we keep moving in the presentation. So another way, uh, just another way to depict the ability of a career framework to set realistic expectations. And while it is a pyramid, um, and you you know there may not be unlimited opportunities for promotion, it also a career framework shows that there are opportunities. Um, it helps you get a better sense of um, understanding your workforce needs and your human capital needs um, to make sure that you know what the right, the number and type of talent that's needed. Um, so you're not faced with a situation of having maybe too much talent in a certain job um, or a certain num num too many of one type of role being conducted or that you don't have a ca talent gap and that, that there's a specific skill or a specific area that you need, your organization needs in order to progress and it's just not available. So by doing this workforce planning, you're able to make sure that you're aligning your population and you, of your organization to the needs um, from a human capital perspective to achieve your strategy or to achieve your business goals. So while it helps set realistic op op expectations in terms of the opportunities, it also shows that where there's going to be gaps and where those opportunities might be. Going on to the next slide. Um, additionally, in terms of setting realistic expectations, um, a career framework and the detail that goes into creating a career framework also helps increase fairness and consist consistency. So what you're seeing on this um, slide, it may be difficult to see, there's a lot of text on it, but what it's trying to show is what are the differences between levels within an organi organization. And in this example, it's um, individual contributor levels and how those change as you move up. So there's three here on, on the slide that you can see. And what are the differences between um, you know, flexibility? How does that look different as you progress from a level one to a level three? How does the training and education and experience that's required change as you progress from a level two, one to a three? Um, what are the organizational or technical skills that are needed as you progress? So it's really a way of formalizing this information. Um, we work with clients who, you know, really, once they've built this information, they put it out there, either through an HRIS system or an intranet system, what a way for an individual on their own to go there and get an understanding of what the differences are between levels within an organization so that if they're, for example, an individual contributor one and they want to know how to progress to a level three, they can go in there and get a better understanding and then talk to their manager about, okay, I'm at a level one right now, but I uh, you know, would like to progress to a level three. What are some of the development actions that I need to take in order to continue to move to that level? Um, so it helps increase the consistency in terms of how promotion decisions are made, um, increases the perception of fairness and that, that all that information is available and it really puts the ownership on the individual employee or manager to have those conversations to know how to progress through, uh, through the career framework and up a career path. Um, another benefit is um, have within having a career framework is um, we call it breaking the ad addiction to job evaluations. Um, and we often find that, um, especially uh, with if you're in within human resources and within a compensation structure, or sorry, you have a compensation role, um, you might find yourself doing a lot of job evaluations and job re-evaluations as people see that as an opportunity for um, increase in pay. Um, in this example that you see, um, that understanding of what it takes to sort of progress within a career opens up an opportunity to pay more for growth. So for example, you would start in the first level uh, pay range for career, career, career progression 
and then be able to move up to a second level as you progress in your career. So you're still paying within a similar salary range, but you're different. You're using different points within the range based on where an individual is with, within their career. So that's an example of how um, using this knowledge of you know, what is required at different levels within a career to then pay for that um, growth as you move within a job. So um, you may be asking yourself, well, where, where would this budget come from <laughs> in terms of um, being able to use growth pay as another vehicle for, um, as another pay vehicle? So we have here just an example of maybe what your current budget is made of. So you're currently using your salary budget for either performance or merit increases, um, using it for reevaluations and for promotion. So those might be three buckets that you currently have. So what we've seen is that as you get better about not having to do so many about job reevaluations because of the understanding of that you gain from a career framework, you can shift some of the uh, budget that you would use for reevaluation and have that allocated um, for growth pay. So you could still be using a similar type of budget, but you're allocating it differently in that you're switching from um, just reevaluations, promotions, and merit increases to allowing for um, opportunities for growth pay as a result of not having to do as many um, job reevaluations. Obviously, that's a simplistic um, depiction, um, but you know something that we've seen our clients implement as they get more um, comfortable with using um, the elements of a career framework. Um, another benefit for a career framework is to really be able to help individuals grow with their within their career. So, um, you know, we've talked about some benefits to the organization in that, um, you know, you can sort of use your budgets differently, maybe do less fo focus on job evaluations, but there's also a lot of benefits to an individual. Um, so, you're you're able to identify both. And, and articulate through a career framework both what an individual's strengths are and also what their opportunities are. So um, as part of this um, process, you, know, you identify competencies, for example, or requirements, and an individual might have strengths in communication, analytical thinking, and collaboration. Um, through this process, they also identify that they have opportunities to improve in strategic thinking and project management. So by combining both of those, both strengths and opportunities, you can focus on the growth of an individual. So that individual is better able to perform on their current job. They're also better prepared for any future jobs that might come, and they're better able to meet business needs. So and we really, really do focus not just on identifying individual strengths, but also identifying opportunities for them to grow. Um, within their career. So the combination of strengths and opportunities is what enables an individual to grow. Um, which is depicted by uh, this individual who uh, currently, um, or actually just realized, um, what are the things that this individual needs to work on. Um, so a lot of times um, when we do this work, we hear many times um, that through this process, uh, an individual maybe always knew what his or her strengths are, but is given the opportunity to know also what they need to focus on. Um, and a lot of times they actually didn't even realize that that was an issue or that was something that they needed to focus on until they had a conversation with their manager to say, here are your strengths, here are the things that you need to work on. So it's really an enlightening opportunity um, process. Um, you know, sometimes they are saying you don't know what you don't know and unless there is a method and a mechanism and also a language and terms to identify um, both strengths and opportunities, um, you know, you're not really able to do that. And a lot of these conversations in terms of more 
career development conversations. Um, they don't always happen within the context of like a performance review cycle. So we see a little bit of less anxiety around these conversations because they're more focused on um, future opportunities, career development. So sometimes individuals are more open to having these types of discussions with their managers because it's, it's not just a you know, performance review process, it's a discussion about career development and future opportunities. Another um, benefit for, um, ha you know, in terms of having a career framework, um, it really helps um, kind of gives an opportunity for managers to be prepared to have discussions um, with employees. So you don't find yourself um, surprised at the end of, of the year, for example, um, you know, Sometimes, and, and we've often find that, that managers sometimes, um, this may or may not surprise you, uh, managers sometimes say things that may or may not be true in the end. Um, so for example, an individual might be expecting to have a promotion and then they realize that they're not going to get the promotion and, and they're disappointed. Um, another example, um, an individual may be expecting a pay increase um, and then they realize that um, that's actually not going to happen and they're not going to get a pay increase. Um, an individual may have the expectation that everybody's going to make it to the top no matter what, and then they're disappointed um, when that is not the case. Or an individual may have a conversation with their manager and they only talk about their weaknesses and then they're disappointed. Um, so really trying to have a little fun um, as we've been going through this discussion, but um, just meant to show that, again, having a career framework in place and having the mechanisms to have these types of discussions um, helps prepare managers um, and also um, gives them the tools and the language like I've mentioned before in order to have these the conversations and be clear in terms of what an employee can be, expect um, from their career um, and how they can grow within their career. So all these things combined in terms of um, you know setting realistic expectations, um, being clear on what song you're singing, um, being clear on what your organization's career philosophy is, um, setting realistic expectations and increasing fairness and consistency, all those things combined are um, what we call the career truth. Um, so it, it's really a kind of a holistic approach to career development, um, career opportunities, and career conversations. And, um, you know, we, f we find that as organizations implement these types of career frameworks, it, it gives individuals the truth. And sometimes people may not um, like the truth, uh, but they always appreciate the truth. And I have an example that, um, a personal story that exemplifies this. It's not um, necessarily about my career, um, but it's a personal story that I'll share with you to just sort of exemplify, you know, why we really think that knowing the truth is better than not knowing the truth. Um, so every morning I take my two sons to school and um, in order to get them to their classrooms, I have to, we have to get out of the car, we walk across a busy parking lot, um, we walk across a road where there's a, um, an attendant, you know, safety, a crossing guard um, to make sure that everyone's crossing safely. And, you know, I hold their hands as we walk up and um, I take them to their classroom and, and you know, drop them off um, in each one of their classrooms. So one morning I was, um, I had to park a little bit further away. Um, I didn't get a good close parking spot. So we got out of the car, you know, I got everybody um, onto the sidewalk. We were walking through the busy parking lot and saying hi to people. And we got to the crossing guard and crossed the street. You know, there were a lot of cars um, waiting for us to cross. Um, I crossed the street. Um, and then one of um, my son's teachers kind of ran up to me. And I thought she was, you know, going to say hi and how's your day and she kind of whispered to me that um, my skirt was um, stuck in my pantyhose and everybody who I had just walked across um, had seen it 
And I was um, so incredibly grateful and appreciative that she told me. There are other people that saw me uh, but didn't tell me uh, that I was walking across a busy parking lot with my skirt in my pantyhose. Um, <laughs> but I really appreciated that she took the time to tell me. And if she hadn't, I maybe would have never known. And I would continue throughout my day. I don't know how long I would have made before somebody told me, but would have continued throughout the day. Um, not realizing that I had my skirt in my pantyhose. So um, that's just an example. Um, you know, that might resonate with some of you. Maybe some of you had that experience where you have a conversation with your manager and they really are able to tell you, you know, what are the things that you are good at? What are the things that you need to work on? And what should you have in terms of expectations for career progression? Um, I appreciated being told the truth in that instance. I didn't like it necessarily because I you know, kind of embarrassed myself, but <laughs> I appreciated it and I appreciated knowing, um, you know, what was going on and, and then I was able to fix it. And I think that's another big part of the career truth as we talk about it is that unless you, unless you don't, unless you know, then you're not able to f either fix things, address things, work on things or prepare for your next opportunity. So that's the concept that we call um, the career truth. Um, another uh, benefits of having um, a career framework is that you're really um, able to um, prepare managers. Um, I, I've kind of mentioned this through throughout our discussion today, but um, as part of creating a career framework, um, m tools come with that development. And then the tools both help employees, but they're also targeted towards managers. Um, so that a manager is really empowered to have career conversations with an individual. Um, manager toolkits can be created um, that are for um, their specific employees. Um, you also can do um, training and practice with managers in terms of how to have employee conversations, how to have um, feedback conversations as well. You can um, create talking points to have in development conversations. And also within the process, making sure to build in um, follow-up discussions, um, support, making sure to check in, um, similar to um, performance discussions, um, discussions around career are really not meant to happen, you know, just once a year. They're really meant to be continuous discussions between employees and managers and um, the career framework process and the development of one should also um, include the preparation of managers to have those conversations with their employees. I think at this point, I'm going to transition it back to Robin, and she's going to round out our uh, the other benefits of having a career framework. Great. Thanks, Angelita. Um, I was just going to add one other point here as far as this, this manager piece. Um, it's, it's just so important um, to have managers a part of these career conversations, and um, we have a, a client that we we worked with for quite some time, and this was a completely new concept for managers um, to sit down with their employees, have these conversations. Um, quite frankly, I don't I don't think they really knew how, or it wasn't so much they didn't want to, but they just didn't know what to say, how to talk about these things with their employees, um, and we were able to do workshops um, and essentially before those managers had those conversations they practiced with peer managers and they it was really beneficial for them to talk with their peers get ideas give give each other feedback um, well maybe say try saying this don't say that um, but but that type of practice um, before having those actual conversations um, is really valuable um, so that's on the manager side. Um, and then it is a two-way street. Employees play a very important role and ultimately um, should own um, their career development. So as we've been speaking about today, um, the first component is the setting that framework into place, knowing what those expectations are, what those standards are for performance, um, having your leadership and manager support. Um, so that you're focused and having a balanced conversation on strengths and areas for development. 
Um, we've touched on the manager, you know, training um, being really uh, critical. And then on the employee side, what's up to them? It should be very clear. What do employees need to do? Um, they need to be taking ownership to identify those skills that are needed. So when they take a look at where they are currently and then they see what the expectations are for a, a future opportunity, where are those gaps? What do they need to be working on? Do they need to be seeking out some training or doing some shadowing um, of, of someone else to start building those type of skills. So they should be proactive in identifying and looking for those opportunities, asking for those opportunities, asking for stretch assignments um, and feedback so that it's a, it's a dialogue, an ongoing dialogue about development. So it's not intended to just be once a year type of a conversation, um, but for this to be ongoing, ongoing feedback. Um, in our organization, feedback is is embedded into how we work. Um, so it's very common for us to go into meetings um, as we debrief afterwards. What do we think went well? You know, how, how did this conversation go? How did this presentation go? What could be done better la next time? Um, so if, if you don't have that in place today, it, it's certainly something that um, can be built over time. Um, you know, it's taking those smaller steps um, and then ultimately embedding that into your culture. And the one more thing um, I had mentioned there was we had a, a last final surprise on um, the elements here and this is keeping it alive. So essentially um, being able to really use data uh, to give you information um, about your organization. So in this case, um, we just have some examples, snapshots here of this might be um, an analysis of, uh, at the top here, um, people's competencies and capabilities um, and looking at, okay, where do we have um, people are, are good, where do we have some gaps that we need to be building? Um, this can help you as an organization to think about um, building in training. Uh, so if you see, you know, achieving results, this is a gap that's really pervasive. Um, what type of broader organizational or functional training can we offer to help build that skill versus what type of things are more individualized and that could be dealt with and, and built and built up more at a personal level. Uh, managers working and coaching, coaching employees. Um, so you, as you build the career framework, use the information to help your organization um, continue to, to grow um, and be a high performing organization. So just to recap here, you know, in terms of the, um, the benefits and success factors is getting on the same page on your philosophy. What, what song are you playing? You know, what's the overall philosophy on what it means to have a career at your organization? Be very clear about what's expected. Um, focus more on growth versus the job evaluations. Learn how to in, implement a, a pay for growth mechanism balancing that conversation about strengths and opportunities. Um, focus on equipping your managers to have these conversations, but also be clear with your or with your employees the role that they play and keep it alive in terms of understanding your organization, being able to provide the training uh, and development opportunities that fit with your needs. And I'm going to talk a little bit um, just to kind of wrap up this part of the of the webcast, how would you go about doing this, implementing a career framework? Um, so I'm going to walk through the process steps that that we would typically take. Um, so we would start with the philosophy, and typically that can take about two months. I would it depends on um, a couple things, um, how many people you're involving. In, in leadership, and then also the level of alignment that there is um, starting out. So the, the purpose of this is really um, working through interviews and focus groups with leaders 
to ask a series of questions. What does it mean to have a career here? What are our objectives of, of having a career development program here? Um, and we've, we've had clients that have been very closely aligned um, and then it was easy to move into subsequent phases or, and we've also had clients that were all over the place um, and had very different ideas of what they wanted to see accomplished. Uh, and that takes longer. That takes longer to, to work through and figure out um, how do you get closer on the same page or you know, what areas can you be okay with not having as close alignment. Um, so then the second piece is actually um, you know, designing those elements. So talking about what, what will be included in our career framework. Are we going to have competencies? Are they going to be specific at a functional level? Or do we want to just focus on those broader organizational competencies? Um, and then we actually um, strongly recommend doing a pilot function or area to test the, your framework um, and then refine it. Um, because oftentimes you may have a framework that you sketch out, uh, you think will work for your organization, and then when you go to implement it, you find problems. You find this isn't really going to work operationally for us. Um, so by doing a pilot, you can really fine tune um, your framework and make sure it has all the elements that, are, that you need, or maybe there you find that there's some you don't need, and you take those out before you implement the whole career framework. So once you've gone through the pilot, um, then you move to implement your full career framework and then decide the metrics. So what are you going to measure? What are you going to keep track of? Um, so that over year to year, you can track that and see, is this successful? So some things you might include would maybe be um, promotion rates. You may want to know, um, you know how many people are being promoted or hired and promoted within versus that are being hired externally, seeing that you're um, having people grow. Um, you might measure um, development, um, plan progress. Um, you might measure pay for growth. So, in, you know, looking at job evaluations versus the, the pay for growth. Um, so, so using these metrics, deciding what's going to be meaningful for your organization and then measure going forward. Um, and then the lastly, it's reviewing and refining your framework over time. Um, once you have a framework in place, um, you know, typically it's not something that would necessarily have to be updated um, on a highly frequent basis, um, but over time you would want to revisit and adjust it um, as needed. So um, that really walks us through the core um, of the content that we really wanted to share with you all. Um, and let me just go here. This, would, this is our contact information. Um, we are both located um, in the same office, actually on the other side of the wall <laughs> to each other. Um, and uh, happy to, you can reach us over email. Um, these are our office lines, the numbers that are here. Uh, we'd be happy to you know, answer any of your questions or have a conversation with you all um, as you would like. Thank you, Robin and Angelita. Um, so I want to address uh, some questions. And uh, I have a couple questions. But as we're chatting, if, if those of you in the audience have questions, please feel free to type those in the chat uh, bar at the left-hand side of your screen. So first, I want to address Matthew's question. So he says, curious to understand if and how this approach has been has been or could be used to work through organizational design efforts. Uh, do either of you or both of you want to take that question? Yeah, I'll, I'll take it. This is Angelita. Um, yes, we have um, done this, um, you know, kind of using a career framework to also think about how to organize um, your function or organize uh, organize your organization. Um, one thing that we've done um, with another client as well is we actually started um, kind of even a, a few steps um, before uh, OD or organizational design, we start with um, the vision of the function or the vision of the organization um, to say, you know, and it, it may not be where you are now, but who do you want to be when you grow up? 
what type of function do you want to be? What type of organization do you want to be? And so we work with leaders to define that and say, we may not be there now, but eventually we want to be at this point um, st and start with that to then say, okay, so based on this vision, how do we want to organize our function? And through that type of career framework process, identifying the different types of jobs and then which could also equate to maybe different sub functions and then what are the levels within their jobs so it's not always part it's not always part of an organization design effort but we have worked with organizations where they're kind of doing both a career framework and an OD effort thank you uh, Robin do you have anything to chime in on that Um, no, I think uh, Angelita um, handled that and pre and pretty uh, pretty completely. Okay, great. I've got a couple questions for you. So again, if you're listening uh, and you want a question, go ahead and type in the chat bar while we're talking. We'll be sure to address that. So I'm curious, um, whoever wants to answer this, can you talk to first line supervisors who may be listening to this about how they might be able to incorporate some of these ideas to help employees develop, even if their organization strategically is not using this a part of their their design. Sure, I can I can um, answer that. This is Robin. Um, so, how can first line managers start to use some of these concepts, even if there's an informal, say, career framework that's going that's being implemented? Is that the question? Yes. Okay, just wanted to make sure I understood. Um, absolutely. So, as a as a first line manager, um, you are one of the key individuals um, to talk with your employees about their um, development. And you can. Um, I'm going to go back to a slide really quickly. If I can get there. Okay, um, so you might have some of these elements in place if you don't have a full career framework. Um, you can start with your, your job descriptions. Um, start with talking to employees about what the performance expectations are um, within their day-to-day -day job. Or you might have goal setting. You might talk to them about what are some tangible um, goals that they can be setting and and having those the dialogue around the, the components that might be in place um, and and thinking about that balance of what are you doing well you know what are some of your strengths and talking to your employees about those um, and then what are areas that you can improve what can you be doing better in your job today what can you be thinking about for future opportunities what kind of opportunities are you interested in um, you can certainly have these type of conversations um, without a, you know a full career framework the career framework really helps as far as giving giving the tools giving the um, resources and the terminology to use um, but you certainly can as a as a manager as a supervisor um, apply these concepts with your employees Angelita, are there any ideas that you want to throw in on that? Um, I, th I would just echo also what Robin said and, and really focus on, um, you know, just having conversations with your employees about where do you want to be within in your career, um, you know, in, in ne by next year, in the next three years, in the next five years, and, you know, how can I help? What are some things that you feel like you want to work on? Um, you know, either it doesn't have to be a training course, but maybe on the job experiences. So just having general career um, inquisitive conversations about an individual's career and their desires, I think it's, you know, you don't have to have all these things in place, but you can talk, definitely talk to your employees about their career desires, career development um, goals without having to have a formal framework in place. Thank you. Um, so uh, occasionally there are leaders in companies that aren't 
uh, astute, let's just say that, about the human elements of doing business. So how might a, a manager or even employees, how might they, what are some ideas you might have that they might be able to kind of sell this up to incorporate career frameworks into the strategy of how the company is being run? So, um, okay, I'll make sure I understand. So it's, um, you know, how, how can an employee talk to a manager about implementing a career framework? Well, so you have people in the C-suites who... Was that the question? You have people in the C-suite who are making business decisions based on numbers, and that tends to filter down through HR to managers and supervisors and employees, right? Well, so how can at the employee level or supervisor mm -hmm. level, how could they help to create change in the company so that uh, it's it's more uh, you know how can how can they get this idea upwards if they're the ones hearing it do you have any ideas about that um, I mean I th I think it's you know having more conversations with managers and with um, your supervisors about you know I think a lot of it can come down to an attraction and retention discussion in terms of talent. Um, you know, nowadays, and there's a lot of research um, from the millennial generation about, you know, one of the things that they really want to be able to see in a company is having um, career opportunities, career growth, understanding sort of what their path is. Um, so I think the more that you can kind of talk about it from an attraction and retention perspective, I think that helps. Um, you know, I don't know if an individual, you know, one in, one employee will be able to impact, you know, someone at the C-suite, but I think the more that um, managers hear that from their employees and that they will be able to then collectively bring up those issues um, you know, up to the highest levels in the organization. Great. Uh, Robin, do you have uh, ideas? Yeah, I actually... I ha well, yeah, I was I was um, just going to mention um, one other one other thing. I, I mean, I agree with Angelita as far as um, one person that you know that's a starting point. Um, there is a there's a YouTube video that we wanted to um, send the link out for you all. Um, it's a really nice. Um, we worked with a client, um, and it's a it's a little whiteboard video that explains a career architecture um, pretty succinctly and simply. And um, this is something that you could share. You know, you could share, employees could share um, at your organization. That's a nice visual of here's, here's how this is meaningful. And I want this, you know, we want this at our organization. So um, I will, I'll put that here in the chat box in a moment. Um, I won't put it there right the second just because it will take you out of this um, presentation. Um, but I'll put that here and that's a really good um, a tool that really speaks for itself uh, in terms of the benefits of a career framework. Great, thank you. Um, so you can go ahead and put that link in whenever you get the chance. Um, I just have one more question for you. So let's uh, let's how how can you talk, help employees? How can they use parts of this if there's no support from their managers or even their organization? What are some ideas that you have just for employees at that at that level? Um, I'll help. I'll start. Um, I think it's. I think if there's no support, I think you just, you know, take it upon yourself. Um, so you may not be able to have a good conversation with your manager or supervisor about development opportunities, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't be thinking about it or shouldn't be doing it. Um, so maybe asking other peers or colleagues kind of, you know, how they've progressed and what are the things that they've done. Um, I think you should always be preparing for your next opportunity, even if you don't have support from a manager or a supervisor. So maybe you can't have career discussions with your manager, but have them with yourself. <laughs> have them with yourself about where do I want to be? How do I need to develop? What should I be doing? Have them with a colleague have them with your significant other. Um, but I think it's always a, a healthy thing to do, even if you don't have support from a manager, to be thinking about 
you know, how do I make sure I'm continuously learning and growing? Thank you, Robin. Do you have any ideas on that? Um, no, I mean, I, the only other one I would add is, um, you know, looking for a, a mentor. Um, if you don't, again, don't have a formal mentor program within your organization, um, you can seek someone out. That could be another avenue um, to be working on your career development um, if you don't have, you know, a formal infrastructure. Great. Thank you. So uh, I want to just hand this over to you to make any closing ideas or comments that you have, and then I will I will close this out when you are done with that. So are there any last thoughts you either of you would like to leave with us? Um, I would just be interested to, I know based on the, the format here, um, we didn't get into a lot of dialogue, but I would really um, invite anyone to share um, on on Twitter what's going on in your organization, any kinds of successes or challenges that you've faced in particular um, when it comes to career frameworks, um, would be really interested in, in having that dialogue. Great. Angelita? Yeah, I would just um, say thank you to everybody. Thanks for your time. Um, hopefully you, maybe you learned something today, uh, maybe something that you can think about using within your organization. And if you do have any other, any questions or anything else you'd want to discuss that doesn't happen on Twitter, please feel free to give us a call or send us an email. And go green, go white. <laughs> Thank you, Robin and Angelita, for being here. Thank you for the information that you shared. Um, so I just want to close this out in saying the MSU Alumni Lens exists to build a portfolio of professionally and personally enriching content and experiences for Spartans around the globe. We're constantly looking for ideas regarding content and experiences that help Spartans grow personally and professionally. So I'd invite you to shoot me an email if there's something that you want to hear about, something you want to learn about. Uh, no ideas too off the wall for us. We are open to ideas. So uh, let us know what you want to learn or who you want to hear from. Uh, also, you know, we try to be responsible with the uh, stewardship that we have of the funds that we have. So we try to keep these things free uh, and as many as our programs at low cost or no cost that we can. So we appreciate your donations. If you think about it, you can just go to alumni.msu.edu if you want to support these professional series webcasts. We'd love to have you mention that uh, in the subject when you uh, decide to donate. We appreciate that. Um, what's coming up in the future? So in May, we've got a lot of great webinars coming up, but in May, we have uh, the resumes for STEM careers. How do you do that? Uh, and then uh, that'll be on May 14th. May 28th, we have closing the gender gap in the boardroom. So another great topic. And we've got a lot of other ones coming. The second and fourth week of every week, uh, month. We do these on Thursday from 1230 to 130 Eastern Standard Time. So thank you for joining us and uh, please get a hold of us if there's anything we can do for you. And once again, go green. Go white. <laughs> <laughs>